go on to other questions and Deputy Charlie McConnell as number six. Thank you, Lask and Carla. Uh, Minister, this is to ask you if you will put in place an appeal mechanism to facilitate uh, the review and change of outcomes which are generated by the nearest school rule under the school transport scheme, um, in which families which are affected by this rule and consider decisions to be inefficient and unfair are able to appeal the particular circumstances of a decision. And also, uh, Minister, if you will comment on a previous parliamentary question written, which I had I submit it to you, um, and if you will allow for an appeal of that particular decision. Thank you. Minister. Mm, thanks, Dr. Skewer. Uh, it is prerogative of parents to send their children to the school of their choice. Uh, eligibility for school transport is determined to the nearest school having regard for ethos and language, uh, and, and that they can be resourced to take the, the relation to special needs as well. The, from the outset of the scheme, the measurement of the shortest traversable route from a child's home to the relevant education centre has been used to determine whether or not a child qualifies for school transport based on the distance criteria. This approach is applied equitably and impartially throughout the country, including the Pacific case referred to uh, by, by the deputy as well. The School Transport Appeals Board, which is independent of the department, determines appeals against decisions made uh, by or on behalf of the department regarding the provision of school transport services or, or any grant aid under the terms of the schemes. The appeals form are available on my department's website, so they, they are entitled to appeal. That's what they want to do. You're asking that, you know, you know, you're, you're claiming that it, it's a, the scheme is, un, is inefficient and unfair. The idea of this, this, the scheme rules changed in the 2011 budget and were implemented in 2012-2013 school year to give parents a, you know, advance warning in relation to picking their school. The, the scheme was brought in to bring in cost savings and to manage the system a lot better. And the criteria is different than it was in the past. So many parents might judge that as unfair because if they have siblings already going to a school or if they want to go to their traditional choice school, as, as you said in your own question before as well. But that's, that was then old criteria rules. The, the, the judgment now is on the nearest school, which is probably the most efficient way to provide transport on behalf of the taxpayer here. From the nearest school, that's the school that you get to. If you want to choose a different school, that's your prerogative, that's your choice. But, the, but the, the scheme can't uh, continue to, to fund uh, transport to any school that you choose. It has to be to the nearest school, and that's the criteria that was used. So it Thank is certainly fair and it is efficient. Come on, uh, Deputy Charlie McConnell. Am I correct in saying, Minister, that any appeal has to be decided upon according to the criteria that your department sets? So an appeal would actually look at the criteria and the rules, and if the decision of, board, uh, of Boss Aaron is, meets that criteria, then the appeal board actually can't change it. Am I correct in saying that? Yep. Use the criteria sorry, set down. Sorry, that has to be Minister. Oh, sorry. I just yeah. I no, no, get no, your minutes and you, then Thank you. Come back. The, okay. The, this, this is something which the, the government changed in 2012, and I have raised over the course of the last two years, Minister, numerous instances of where the application of this rule has been exceptionally unfair. And just to be clear, what it requires is that even in cases where previous children in a family have always got transport traditionally to a school, where a new student from that family starts school, they have to actually go to another school if it is the closest, or else pay €350 Euro a year to get on the bus along with their older brothers and sisters. That's an exceptionally unfair and unjust position to put many of those families in, and for families who don't have the money. It is an excruciating decision whether they allow a child to go with their older brother or sister and stump up the €350 Euro or else send them on their own uh, to a different school. The Pacific instance in that parliamentary question, Minister, I referred to is, uh, is a decision by Bus Aaron in recent weeks to actually have an area, or the Orris area in County Donegal, now go to a school in Bunkrana using what is called Mamore Gap, a mountain road. 800 feet above sea level, despite the fact it's just beside the coast, Thank you, not possible for most of the winter. And those families are now faced with a situation that to continue to go to Cairndunn the Community School, which they've always had transport to in the past, they will have to pay €350 Euro per child or €650 Euro per family if there's more than two children in the family to actually go and continue to go to the school that they're currently going to. Thank you, there's no means, Minister, me. currently by which unfair decisions like that can be addressed by the Department. And what I'm asking you is, can you look at the particular circumstances of that case to try and ensure that common sense prevails and in other instances too, Minister, of which there's been a number, to try and bring some sense to the situation and not continue with the head in the sand approach over the last two or three years we've seen. I come to back the to the exceptions Deputy to the rule and that has been I call the Minister now. Minister. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm familiar with the case. We've answered PQs on this before. Uh, and you keep saying it, it's unfair. The, the, the scheme and the system and the policy has to be fair and equitable right throughout the country. And the same rules are applied across the board. 
Both Aaron operate uh, on behalf of the department, and they, they, they've measured this route and they picked the, the, the shortest route. That is the criteria. That's the job they do, and it's implemented across across the across the, the local inspectors will, will, recommend, will make recommendations as well, and that's that's key. In this case, you say it's, un, it's unfair. There, there, there are siblings. It, it's going to be complicated in the first. Uh, seven or eight years when you change from one system which was based on catchment boundaries over to a new system which is probably a more logical system but it's it's complicated because there are families who have already started under the old criteria so there's no doubt that it's complicated for families we know that but the decision was made to make this the most efficient way to provide a service on behalf of the taxpayers of this country the people of this country to make sure that those who needed uh, a bus transfer to, to their nearest school will get it and it's been implemented across the board. There were 63,000 people who were judged on that in the last year alone. And the system is fair. It might be difficult and more complicated when you have uh, families who are on spread two sets of rules. Yes, and I've acknowledged that in the past, that that is difficult. And at all times, Bus Air and I have tried to judge this fairly, pick the most, the, 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 most, the, the nearest route, but also to, to find, if when they can, concessionary places for, for families and siblings. Thank you, Minister. Going to school already. That is, in most cases, by a lot of cases, a concessionary uh, pass is, 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 a, is Thank a, is you, Minister. Deputy McCullough. Thank you. I'm, I'm very disappointed, Minister, and I have to say I will continue to oppose your decision in relation to this, not to actually address the situation and overturn the decision. Unfortunately, it is unfair, Minister, and it is the rule which your government is enforcing here and requiring Bus Aaron to enforce on your behalf, which is leading to this unfair situation. The one example I've given to you, the, the Oris area of Clamani Parish in County Donegal, and there's a number of other areas across the country in a similar situation, but I believe this is the most extreme one I've seen yet. You were asking them to go over a mountain pass, and the, the reply, parliamentary reply I got from you said that the road, it doesn't actually have to be a road which is traversable by bus. Indeed, it can be a, a pedestrian route which actually determines what the nearest school is to you. You are now requiring a situation where you are telling the people in the Urus area that they have to use that mountain pass and they'll only get free transport to Bunkrana schools. When if a, a school bus was to being provided to them, that school bus would actually would have to go away from the area from the pass. It simply couldn't go over the Memorial Gap. It would actually have to go along the route which it currently goes to deliver them to Carndona Community School. Thank you, Deputy. And indeed, it will have to then continue on even further as a result of the fact that it has to now go to Bunkrana. Um, that minister will actually cost a lot more. More time for those students to actually go to school. And indeed, uh, so it costs the, uh, cost the department more, and it also costs more time for the students. And indeed, it costs money for families who actually will have to continue and want to continue to go actually go to Carndonan Community Thank School you, if Deputy. they decide to do that. You're over time, it makes Deputy no Nell. sense, Minister. It's totally unfair, and it's one which you, as a Minister, working with Minister O'Sullivan, needs to look at, because Thank there needs to be a mechanism in place that looks at the particular circumstances where there are very unusual circumstances thrown up by the application and the brute, the brute application of this very cut and dry. Thank you, Deputy. I have to call the Minister. So I would ask you, Minister, to we know this, look at we know this the, again we know the and question. To, to, to see Minister, if there is a way around uh, it. Mr. Triple. I think we have to be very clear. You have to have a, a policy and, 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 and a decision making mechanism that is fair throughout the country, that everybody is treated equally. And you want to blame mostly on the English government. I, I, I'm trying to find out here. The policy change was written by a previous government. In budget 2011. Shh. In budget 2011. And, and I, I think the policy Please. change we, we, it's, it's the right one. It's just based on the nearest school. The old system meant that you, had, you could have a choice and you could have buses going traversing all over the countryside. There is a logic to this on behalf of the taxpayer. The cost of providing the, the school transport goes up every year. It's very, very expensive. And you're trying to manage this as fairly and as equitably as you can on behalf of the taxpayers. And it was a previous government that suggested the changes and brought in the changes. We've implemented them and we, we, we'll stand over them because they are correct, but don't try to make out that, you're, that, you're, that, that, that it's all somebody else's fault. That the right decision was made here to get the best value of money. But you, you have to judge this scheme for equitably across the country for everybody. You can't make up rules as you go along for each time. It doesn't work that way. And it wouldn't be fair. Now, both Aaron, uh, genuinely, and I've re reviewed many, many files, always try to find and do the right thing locally when, when, when they can, under implementing the rules fairly for Thank everybody you, across the board.